Hi. Just thought I'd show you something. I like, I like showing this off. This is a 3D TV. Do you remember 3D TVs from however many years ago? They were like the next big thing. Um, and, and as usual, they didn't take off. But I thought, huh, I wonder if I can use software to take um, you know, computer-generated anatomy models and render them once for each eye and then display them on a 3D TV so we, we can see them stereoscopically. And then you can look at complicated things. So you won't be able to see what I can see, but I've got me stereoscopic glasses and then we can look at stuff, look at lots of detail. And when you're looking at all of this detail with your two eyes stereoscopically, you're seeing it in 3D you're not having the 2D problems of trying to work out where things are. Your brain just knows where things are. It works really, really well. Of course, we haven't been able to use this um, because we haven't had students here because of COVID. And then we haven't been able to use this because we can't really share 3D glasses. And now, if I put these on, <laughs> they steam up straight away. So we have to do this, do this teaching kind of like, like, like this, right? So now, what I'm trying to say is that we've got back to the point with COVID regulations, or I can now use my 3D TV to teach students in a small group. We're, we're doing some consolidation weeks. This is an opportunity to, for students to ask about anything, and I will talk about anything, and we will go out over any anatomy in the body. So this is kind of a perfect resource. We might use it amongst some models. So this is what's running it. It's an Alienware PC from, <laughs> from back in the day. It is running Windows 7 and I dare not update it because you cannot get the software that I use anymore So it's not connected to the internet. It doesn't get anything added to it when it stops working. That's it It stops working. So for you guys that looks really weird and blurry because there's two views, right? There's one view for each eye So one eye sees that's not gonna work is it? So one eye sees that and the other eye sees that. And your brain puts together the two images and sees it stereoscopically. You've got to be here to appreciate it, but honestly, it is. I haven't used this for ages, right? I used to use it in teaching all the time. Plugged it in this morning, and this is the second week I've been using it for, and it worked. And every time you put the glass on, it's like, ah. Oh, It's so good. I'm quite pleased with myself. If you would like to know how to do this, you can't. As far as I know, it is now impossible. Unless you're able to get one of these old TVs, completely clone my PC, and even then I'm not sure because of the security stuff, but you can't get the software anymore. See, look, back when I was building this, we kind of needed a gaming PC. That was the only thing that had enough power because it's got a proper gaming graphics card to render a stereoscopic scene twice, once for each eye. Honestly, everything is so powerful now. You could pretty much do, you could do this on your phone, right? If your phone could do a 3D thingy. Phones are so powerful. Something else I'm prototyping. A bit of a secret at the moment. Work hard, get dope. I was asleep. Down, I might take a nap. And they thought I was playing around. I was up like my tax. Living fast. Over limit on the freeway. Hope no cops pass. Had to dip off for a minute. Yeah, that's my bad. But I can't stay for too long. I gotta go. I gotta go. I grab my bag and hit the dash. Yeah, adios. I dropped the clutch and slammed the gas. And it's vomitos. If you're not first and you're in last. I got a climb with Ben this week. Because, um, well, last week when we went kind of climbing, not climbing. And we ended up here. Um, Kim decided she wanted to do some scrambling around the coast. So we, uh, we, we did. We 
the tide wasn't super far out. We did this kind of like low level scrambling, which can be really good fun. Um, bit of coke, something I kind of hadn't seen before, and discovered things like this cool cave which if the tide is in you can't get to with the kayak well if the tide is in it's filled up and if the tide is out like this then you can't see it you can't get to it from a kayak so you can only get to it by scrambling so that was cool cool find but as we continued around we did all the kind of difficult stuff and dangerous stuff didn't bother filming it filming it because we were just you know mucking about but um some of it's a bit scrambly iffy and then Kim fell in a rock pool um, on an easy bit she just hasn't got very good tread on her shoes slipped on something twisted and uh, yeah sat down in a rock pool completely soaked herself um, and she was fine we walked off you know a few scratches and stuff but then when we got home later that day and the next day in all week she's had a very sore knee so I She's got a strain, I think, of probably her medial collateral ligament on her knee. So, no running, not a lot of walking, no climbing. I'm also a big fan of VR. I'm not entirely sure where the camera is. I think it's over there somewhere. And that's one of the problems of VR and teaching with VR is that you're separated from the real world. But VR is this amazing, magical experience that oh, um, takes you somewhere else. And with VR, it is impossible to describe what this is like unless you actually experience it, just like the 3D TV. Um, it is stereoscopic, so we have size, we have distance we can see great detail my eyesight in VR is actually better than it is in real life um, because I'm not really seeing the things that I'm seeing it's on a screen and the lights being bent to my eyes and that sort of thing yeah so earlier this year we were looking at um, applying for some funding to purchase technology to improve our teaching improve teaching across all of our groups and learning and studying and to pull people into anatomy and that sort of thing and we considered virtual reality, because I'm a huge fan of virtual reality. If you saw me during the lockdown, I used a little bit in teaching, and we, I was using virtual reality to, you know, be in a different space while we were locked down in our homes. And what it gives you is, it gives you scale. I can see the size of this skeleton. It is life-size, and I can move around it and look at it, inspect it from different directions. It's not as high quality as the skeletons in the lab, but it's, you know, it's really, really good. And it's in three dimensions. It's stereoscopic, just like my 3D TV, which means that I understand that the vertebrae are posterior and the sternum is anterior. My brain, because it's used to experiencing the world through two eyes and building up three-dimensional shapes, which is so important in anatomy, that spatial awareness of where things are relative to one another um, is really helpful. How do I? I don't know how much I can switch on with this because this is just the trial one. Virtual reality is fantastic. It's beautiful. It's great for three-dimensional spaces, three-dimensional objects. Um, and it's another one of those things like the 3D TV that unless you've actually experienced it, nobody can explain to you or describe to you what this is like. Um, because you need your two eyes, you need to be in this space. I, you know, I feel like I'm in a different space. To you, I have to try and move my head really smoothly so that it's not too jerky for you. But for me, I just move my head naturally as if I would in a real, was in a real space and, you know, I can see the room around me. It's incredible. So, the reason we didn't apply for funding for virtual reality is because, well, I'm sure we might be able to do this on something like the Oculus Quest, which is a cheaper standalone device. But otherwise you're looking at investing into powerful PCs, headsets, and do we want one as a gimmick, as an example? Do we want five or six? We can use this as an actual teaching thing. Um, so then again, so it's a significant investment in money, but then what do you do with it? Um, 
you're buying more software. We already spend a lot of money on software. And students are then learning on their own. You can't access the textbook while you're looking at this. You can't access your cup of tea while you're looking at this. You can access the information that's available in whichever app you to choose to use, like this here. This is, this is lovely. Um, but you also can't work with other people. And I want students to be working with other people, talking to each other, using the language of anatomy, because then recall becomes easier, because it becomes second nature, it becomes part of your language, right? And I want you problem solving together, I want you error correcting together. And yeah, sure, I could build a Steam environment where we have five or six users in the same space and you're looking at the same thing. I've got loads of skeletons in the lab. I've got loads of high quality models in the lab. We've got cadavers. I can put a group of students around those and that already exists. So it's not giving a massive advantage to us, to our particular use case. If you were teaching anatomy remotely, however, oh yeah. You could have students remote around the world, remoting into the same space, doing something together. Massive advantage, that's worth funding, right? That would be worth setting up. That would be, that'd be fun, actually, wouldn't that be cool? I could, get, I, could get, I could have you guys here with me. But then you see the problem. You have got to have the computer and the VR headset for us to be together in a virtual space. You know what I mean? Um, but the other side effect is that I've spent hundreds of hours in VR and it is tiring. You can only spend a certain amount of time in here. And when your phone gives you a notification, you can't see what that notification is. You're separated from the world. Um, I've got a very sore neck because I was playing a new, new puzzle VR game recently and it was so wonderful I couldn't put it down and oh my neck is so sore. Um, so it is tiring. So you can only do it for short periods of time. And anatomy takes a lot of time to study, right? Um, and um, yeah, so there's like there are advantages and disadvantages. And for us, the advantages did not outweigh the disadvantages. Now, um, augmented reality, I am a big fan of. Got loads of plans for augmented reality. So we could put students in the space together. They would hopefully have some lightweight glasses on. So you've got none of the soreness problems, the aches, the physical stuff. You could sit down together and we could put models, we could put anatomy, we could put things in front of you. All of you can see it. All of you could work on it and talk about it. I'm just waiting for the hardware technology to catch up to, <laughs> to our visions, right? But that is going to be cool. I'm also very bad at, um, no, I'm very good at predicting the wrong future. So, bear that in mind.